my 10-year high school reunion was coming up. I didn't originally plan on going, but my friends convinced me. The reunion was in August on a Saturday, organized by a group of people from our graduating class, and it was going to be held at some catering hall in a nice area of town. It had been a long time since I'd seen any of these people, minus my handful of friends from high school who I'd be going with. I really didn't want to go because I didn't like a lot of the people from my high school. And making small talk with the hundred people I hadn't seen in 10 years sounded awful. But I also felt like if all my friends went and I didn't, I'd feel like I was missing out. When the night of the reunion finally came, I drove to my friend Kayla's house, and our two other friends, Marissa and Sophia, came as well. We were pre-gaming at her house, and then we ended up calling an Uber from there. The reunion started around 8 o'clock, so we got there fashionably late at 9 o'clock. We stepped into the party hall, and right away, familiar faces everywhere only older looking versions of everyone. There had to be at least 80 to 100 people here, and it was more than I was expecting. Being with my friends made it easier to say hi to people I hadn't seen in forever. The vibe honestly was a bit different than I was expecting. There was a DJ, party lights, and a generally loud atmosphere. Whereas what I was expecting was a quiet, intimate setting focused heavily on talking. People were getting really drunk at this, including my friends. We sat at a table with some other girls from high school, about 10 of us at the table. As the night progressed and everyone mingled and caught up with different people, I found myself feeling a bit awkward as my friends were doing their own things. I was alone at the table eating, and I noticed a guy who I didn't recognize at another table looking in my direction. When we locked eyes, I looked away, but I wondered who he was. I glanced back for just a second and noticed he was still looking at me. Next thing I knew, he was coming over to sit next to me. He told me his name was Connor, and he started hitting on me immediately, saying he saw me across the room couldn't help but come over and say hi. He was honestly decent looking, and I felt awkward sitting alone anyway, so I really didn't mind him sitting there. I said, I don't recognize you. Did you go to our school? He said, yeah, everyone's been saying that. I transferred to your guy's school our senior year. I did. I met a lot of you. I basically said, oh, that's interesting. Who do you actually know here? He replied that he's just friends with a couple of guys who are also here. I asked their names, and he gave first names only. I guessed the last names, and he said yes to both as he laughed. We talked for a while, until he asked for my number, so that he could go back to his friends. I gave it to him and walked away. My overall impression was that he seemed normal, and I enjoyed talking to him. Now I was left alone again. So after finishing my food and drink, I went to find my friends. They were all separated, talking with different people, some of whom I wasn't the biggest fan of. I went over to Kayla, who was mid-conversation with a few people, and I joined the conversation. My friends were all wasted, and I was definitely drunk, but not on their level. I kind of wanted to just go home. It almost felt like a saving grace when Connor texted me, asking me if I needed a ride home since he's leaving. I texted him back, yes, please. He told me to meet him in the lobby of the building. So I looked around and then decided to just do an Irish exit. Too many people to say goodbye to. I saw Connor in the lobby by the front door. We walked to his car. It was a black two-door coupe I honestly don't know what it was. I'm not a car person. He asked me to put my address into his phone. I thanked him for doing this. As we started to drive, 
He pulled a couple of water bottles from the back seat and handed me one. He suggested I drink a lot of water to avoid a hangover tomorrow. So I started to sip some water. Suddenly, my phone started blowing up. Kayla was calling me. And Marissa and Sophia were also texting me in our group chat. I didn't pick up the call, but read their texts. They were asking where I went. And I told them I got a ride home. They kept pressing me, asking with who. And Kayla said, check the Facebook group that organized the reunion. Then, Marissa sent a screenshot of a post made by a girl in the Facebook group, warning everyone of a random guy who wasn't from our school, going around talking to girls and introducing himself as a different name to everyone. Kayla tried calling me again. I pressed decline and texted her. I'm with this guy named Connor. She replied in all caps that someone said they saw me leave with that guy. I wanted to actually vomit now. I looked at the guy and then evaluated the situation. I had to run when I had the chance. The next time we were stopped at a red light, I opened the door and said, I've got to go, and ran as fast as I could. I ran into the parking lot of a TGI Fridays. He didn't chase after me. He just kept driving. I called Kayla back right then and there, and she told me to wait there. They'd all Uber over here and pick me up. I waited in the parking lot for like 15 to 20 minutes until they arrived. By this point, I started feeling extremely drunk, lated, and with a foggy memory. I believe he had put something in that water bottle to try and sedate me. Thankfully, I didn't drink that much. The worst part about this was that the guy now had my apartment address. We all slept at Kayla's house that night. The next morning, I drove home. But shortly after entering my apartment, there was a knock at my door. I freaked out, thinking it was that guy. But I saw it was my neighbor through the window. I opened the door and my neighbor asked me if I knew the guy who came to my apartment last night and was looking through the windows. I told him all about last night. He was appalled too. He said when he confronted the guy, the guy asked him if this was where Miranda lives. My neighbor was wise enough to say, no, you have the wrong apartment. My neighbor doing this just may have saved me from that guy ever coming back. When my lease was up, I moved to a different apartment in the same community just to be safe. I'm super grateful my friends all tried to warn me in time before it was too late. My high school does five and 10 year reunions. My five year reunion was a few years ago. My high school was on the smaller side with around 200 kids per grade. So just about everyone knew everyone, even if just partially. For the five-year reunion, it was being held in a small banquet hall in town. I was excited to go see all my old friends, whom I hadn't seen in forever. Of course, arriving at these things alone can be a bit scary. So my friend Julia and I were going to go together. Julia has been my best friend ever since middle school. She knows about everything that I've been through. And I know about everything that she's been through. That includes the situation I had with a boy named Tyler. Tyler was a boy who I had a little bit of history with, meaning we hooked up a few times. Senior year, but he quickly started giving me crazy and obsessive vibes. When I cut him off, he threatened me and got aggressive. He sent me threatening texts, like he knows where I live and he knows when my parents aren't home and more. One night, he came to my parents' house and threw rocks at my window, and my dad had to go outside and chase him away. As time passed, I guess he lost interest in harassing me. Tyler was friends with some of the, I guess you'd say, weirder kids in high school. Not the athletes, not the cool kids, not the gothy kids, just a slightly weird group. When word got out that he'd been harassing me, a 
lot of people grew to hate him. I just hoped he wouldn't be at the reunion. Julia and I got to the venue where it was being hosted and did our rounds, saying hi to a bunch of people. There were about 50 people there at the peak of the night, which was a solid turnout considering the small size of our grade to begin with. At some point in the night though, I got a tap on the shoulder from none other than Tyler. When I turned to see him, I felt my heart sink. He said, hey, can we talk? It had been years since I'd spoken to him, and that was the first thing he said to me. I said something along the lines of, hey, I hope you're good, but there's nothing to talk about. And I tried to walk away. He grabbed my shoulder and spun me around and said, you're already going to be like that? I pushed his hand off of me and said, let go of me. He looked around nervously and said, all right, all right, and walked away. I could tell he didn't want the negative attention. This now ruined the mood of the night for me, as I had to try my hardest to avoid looking at or going anywhere near Tyler. I noticed he was with one of the kids I remember him hanging around with in high school. I got into a conversation with Julia and a few other girls about the situation with Tyler and how he just grabbed me moments ago. Everyone was on my side and agreed he'd always been a weirdo creep and was known for being aggressive with girls. Oddly enough, I didn't really see him again after I saw him with his friend. I assumed he left early, which was a major relief for me. Julia and I stayed for a few more hours, and then we left with a few other girls to go to a dive bar nearby. After another hour or so, Julia dropped me off at home. As I walked up to my front door, I noticed another car pass by Julia's car and continued driving down the street. Considering the hour and how quiet the street is, that was concerning. It was a Jeep Cherokee. Maybe it was paranoia, or maybe I was rightfully curious. But the next day, I looked up Tyler's Instagram. He was private. I requested to follow him with my fake account. Yes, I have one for situations like this. He accepted my follow request, but I couldn't see any pictures of a Jeep or any car for that matter. This made me feel slightly more at ease. I live alone, so my worst fear was Tyler finding my new address and coming to my house at night. The next day, Tyler DMs me on Instagram, a long message trying to manipulate me into seeing him. All these years later, he was still giving me obsessive, creepy vibes. I blocked his Instagram but I never could have imagined what that would have led to next. The same night I blocked him, I woke up to my doorbell ringing at 1 a.m. repeatedly. I was so scared it to be Tyler. I just knew it. I didn't know what to do. I didn't exactly have my dad here to chase him away like all those years ago. My parents live in Florida now. The doorbell ringing turned to angry sounding pounds on the door, booming through the apartment. This pounding went on for some time, then the doorbell again, over and over and over. I finally went to the door and it stopped. I peeked out of the window at the top of the door and nobody was outside. I slept with one eye open that night. And then the next day, my friend's dad helped me out and contacted his detective friend in our hometown. He came by the house pictures of the text from years ago and the long DM from just a few nights before. He then contacted Tyler and gave him a verbal warning to cease all contact, or this would be considered stalking and harassment. So far, it's worked. It makes me wish we went to the police all those years ago. Some people are dangerous and simply don't change. I hope he's not at the 10-year reunion. I was seeing this girl for a few weeks. We'd been on two dates. Her name was Phoebe. We matched on a dating app, and eventually we met a few days later. She was four years older than me. 
Our first date was drinks, and our second date, we went out with my friends on a weekend. My friends had neutral opinions about her. They thought she was nice and kind of quiet. They'd later reveal their actual thoughts on her, but I'll get to that later. Phoebe invited me to an upcoming high school reunion party. She told me she didn't want to go alone. And honestly, after she came to hang out with my friends and me, I felt like I owed her. This reunion party was falling on a random Saturday in the fall. It wasn't organized by her school though. She told me that it was organized by this rich guy from her class and it was being hosted at his house. I haven't had my high school reunion yet, but as far as I know, these things are usually held at bars or catering halls. We got to this guy's house, and it was admittedly a fancy looking house. It had a gated driveway, but no fancy cars parked anywhere in sight. My thought was maybe the owner parked his car in the garage during the party. The second we stepped into the house, I felt like everyone was staring at us. More specifically, me. A few people came up to Phoebe and hugged her hello, then shifted their attention to me. I felt almost like I was being interrogated with some of the questions these people were asking me, like my whole life story, what I do for a living, who I live with. Finally, Phoebe pulled us away, only to go talk to more people who I also felt like were asking really personal and weird questions. There was also something about all the people in here. They seemed to be older looking than 28, which was the age Phoebe told me she was. Some of these people looked well into their 30s. I made a comment on that to Phoebe, and she said, yeah, some of these people aren't aging too well. I asked if she remembers all these people, and she said yes. I then asked who the party host was. I was curious to meet the owner of this big house. She said she hadn't seen him yet. Throughout the entirety of me being there, I felt like everybody was shooting me daggers, and they wouldn't look away either. I whispered that to Phoebe, and she said back, it's probably because they're wondering who I am. At the time, that was the only logical explanation I could think of too. It's hard to explain the growing awkwardness at this party, but I can assure you, this was not what a normal high school reunion would be like. There was no music, and everyone was dressed weirdly, not like normal 28-year-olds. But that's the other thing, None of these people looked like they were in their 20s. I was getting uncomfortable with some of the stares I was getting in the room we were in. So I told Phoebe, I'm going to run to the bathroom. Realistically, I just wanted to get out of that room and explore the house a little bit. I didn't have a drink in my hand or anything to make me feel at ease. I was just walking around this giant house empty handed and anyone I passed stared at me. To say I felt out of place would be the understatement of the century. I found the bathroom. I stepped inside, even though I didn't have to go. I locked myself inside just to sit and gather myself. Take a break from the awkwardness outside. I texted all my friends about how weird this reunion was and wondering how I could convince Phoebe to leave early. We'd already been there about 30 to 45 minutes, and this unnamed mystery party host was nowhere to be seen. Phoebe texted me, where are you? I replied, in the bathroom, give me a minute. And then I followed that up with, this party is really weird. I'm down to leave soon. Everyone's being weird. Then someone knocked on the bathroom door, so I couldn't sit in there anymore. I washed my hands quickly and left the bathroom. And the guy waiting outside, who looked like one of the younger ones here, said in a very low voice to me, you should leave. That girl isn't who she says she is. 
I froze for a second, then said, Phoebe? He said, whatever she told you her name is. He then asked what she told me this party was, and I said that she told me it was a high school reunion. The guy then smirked and said, do these people look like they're going to a high school reunion? He left it off with, and I quote, trust me, leave sooner than later. And then he walked into the bathroom and shut the door. I almost felt like he was warning me and that something was seriously off about the situation. I decided to trust his instincts and leave as soon as possible. I texted Phoebe, sorry, I suddenly don't feel well. I need to leave. She replied, are you sure? I'll come with you. I told her not to worry and that I'd take an Uber home. I made my way to the exit, feeling a sense of unease and confusion about the strange gathering. As I stepped outside, I noticed that Phoebe didn't try to stop me or follow me out. It was as if she was completely unfazed by my decision to leave. I called an Uber and waited outside the gate of the house, still feeling the eyes of the party goers on me. The Uber arrived and I got in, leaving the peculiar event behind. During the ride home, I couldn't help but wonder about the mysterious warning I had received and the true nature of the gathering. Something was definitely not right, and I couldn't shake the feeling that Phoebe had kept important details hidden from me. As I reached my home, I couldn't help but feel relieved to be away from that bizarre reunion party. I decided that I needed to distance myself from Phoebe and the strange world she seemed to be a part of. It was a night that left me with more questions than answers, and I was determined to uncover the truth behind the enigmatic gathering and the girl I had briefly known as Phoebe. I knocked on the door to get him to come out and further explain, but I thought for a second. I was already suspicious and uncomfortable in this house, and that guy just confirmed something weird is going on here. I walked straight to the front door without drawing attention to myself. I still felt people staring at me as I walked to the door. I walked straight from my car in the street and drove home. Phoebe texted me asking where I went, but I didn't answer. When I got home, I looked up her number on white pages, and that number was not associated with the name Phoebe. The name that came up was Claire Foster. The address that I picked her up at both times is also different than the address that came up on white pages, which made me realize I never saw her leave the house. She was already waiting on me there. I felt a growing sense of unease and fear as I processed the strange and unsettling events of that evening. It was clear that Phoebe, or whoever she really was, had lured me into a bizarre and potentially dangerous situation. I couldn't help but wonder what her true intentions were and what kind of world I had briefly stepped into. I'm glad you decided to leave that strange situation, even though it was certainly an unsettling experience. It's important to trust your instincts when something feels off, as your safety should always be a top priority. It's also reassuring that your friends were looking out for you, even if they didn't want to make you feel bad initially. Sometimes, our gut feelings and the observations of those close to us can provide valuable insights. The fact that the girl gave you a fake name and the warning from the guy to leave sooner than later definitely raise serious concerns about what was happening at that party. It's a good thing you blocked her number and distanced yourself from the situation. While it may remain a mystery, your decision to prioritize your safety was the right one. It's always better to err on the side of caution when encountering such unusual and potentially dangerous circumstances. In this story, the narrator's experience provides us with an important lesson, a 
about listening to instincts and feeling comfortable in unusual social situations. We may not always understand or explain all the events that occur in our lives, but what matters most is prioritizing our safety and taking wise actions when a situation feels odd or potentially dangerous. The story also reminds us of the importance of having caring people around us who can provide support and advice when we encounter things we don't understand. Sometimes, friends and family can see things that we may not realize ourselves. In conclusion, this story teaches us to remain cautious and responsive to our surroundings and to always trust our intuition when something doesn't feel right.